Ladies and gentlemen, every time, every time, tell them, Ray, what happens. Gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, the great Ray Charles. You know what he's going to talk about? He's going to talk about Georgia. While he's talking about Georgia, I got something I want to talk to you guys, you guys about. It's been a very, very stressful three months. There's been quite a bit going on. I've had opposition from without, opposition from within, and I've had to maintain five companies trying to keep them all afloat during this period intentionally we shut down the finances at SACCOM for eight months why we did not bring in a dime for eight months why because while I was gone a lot of things went uncared for then we also had a lot of interference by agencies and governments and I've had enough. Now, now, I just want you guys to understand. We expect there to be interference. We should not expect interference. In this country, out of all the countries on the planet, there should be no interference with our access to the court. Our access to the court should be unfeathered, untethered, and unbothered. But we are constantly having the struggle to file documents in the court. Why is that, everybody? Why is it that we have to struggle and fight to get documents filed? Does anybody have a clue? Because I don't. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have a clue. I really am trying to figure out quite a bit of things so let me tell you something that I said that I was gonna do I was gonna explain to you why that complaint not just against judicial officers but against court officers that means the police that means the attorneys that means the clerks of the court that means the post office it's not just a complaint against the judge. No, this is a complaint against everybody involved in a particular matter and or case. Why? Because, as I stated to you from the very beginning, there is this law, principle, in the Constitution known as separation of powers. It is so solid of a foundational law that neither Congress nor the President nor the courts can interfere with the application of separation of powers. So why is it that the court has documented that the post office becomes an officer of the court when it receives mail? That the police who do security in the court building become officers of the court so that they can be protected by immunity. Shh, don't tell nobody. But they become officers of the court and that the attorneys become officers of the court. Each one of the three idiots groups that I just mentioned are part of the executive branch. You cannot bring the executive branch and the judicial branch together like that. That's too big of a monopoly. Hey, Ray, could you go ahead and let them know? Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ray Charles. The late, great Ray Charles. I have a lot of respect for that young man. Let me go ahead and tell you guys what I did. I typed in here, elements of a valid claim. Let's find out what an element, of a valid, an element of a valid claim is. It is well established that to establish liability for negligence, the plaintiff must prove a duty, a breach of that duty, which is proximate cause of injury and which resulted in damage. All of these elements are essential to a valid claim. 
ladies and gentlemen, I need somebody to do me a favor. Go back and look at that complaint and see if we have not covered that. The only thing you have to do, hold on now, is describe your damage and describe that what they did, which is in the contract, or not the contract, but the document, it explains that they breached their duty and it caused you injury. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Charles is here twice. You see, Ray Charles, Joe on my mind, and Ray Charles, Joe on my mind. They're both live performances, the same exact performance. Okay? I got it live. He did this in 1975, and I got it live. I think this is the best version of this song that that young man did. It's just, it's the way he did this particular rendition that was so perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure a valid claim. Do you understand? You must show that there was a duty, that they breached their duty, and the injury was caused because they violated the law. They committed a crime, and it resulted in damage to not only you, but to the public interest. And you'd be sure that you highlight the public interest when you do your complaints. Now, I did my part for you. You see, everybody's claim gets dismissed because they failed to state a valid claim. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you that document does not fail to state a valid claim. Hold on, let's get here. Oh yeah, we were working on something, I apologize. Let's go here. Let's, let's make sure that this document states a valid claim. Let's make sure that we cover all the elements. Did the incident involve loss or result in misconduct? As a result of misconduct or failure to act? and or from actions of any of the above parties select all that apply you see do you understand why we did it in pdf format why it asks questions why it's an affidavit and why it's notarized because now it becomes a validated verified complaint nature and statement of valid claim and complaint This is also to serve as an indefinite notice of non-appearance. And then you explain why you are not appearing. A properly presented claim must identify the claimants, the sufficiency and sufficiently describe the nature of the claims. It is true, it has been held that a claim filed uh, to be valid need not state the amount of the claim if the claim recites the nature of the claim and its extent. The rules is stated. The claim must identify the message, state the negligence complained of, and the nature and exigent damages sustained. That's why we put it there. That's why you document the dates. That's why you say, hey, this is the way I think it should be. This was my understanding. And, man, it didn't happen like that. It says, please note that I am not aware of all of your rules. However, you know one thing I do know that you don't know? That a claim for judicial misconduct is not you saying the judge violated your rights. A judicial misconduct claim has nothing to do with your rights. It has everything to do with you're saying the judge has disrupted the public perception of the judicial system in America that he has damaged the institution because they're there to protect the institution the same as the internal affairs of the police department is there to protect the image of the police department you don't believe me go back and read their statements the court has a charter ladies and gentlemen read the charter okay you'll see Go and read the judicial misconduct form. Of course, you can't complain because a judge made a, a decision against you that you didn't like. How dare you be so selfish? But if that judge violated the law and came to that conclusion as a result of his violation of your rights, there you go. Then you get to file a criminal complaint, not a misconduct complaint judicial misconduct ladies and gentlemen misconduct 
is a, an administrative procedure. Here's a fact. The defendant may wait to challenge jurisdiction until after the trial begins. In such a case, the court must decide whether the state's evidence of jurisdiction is sufficient to reach the jury, and if so, must submit the issue to the jury. You know, the jury gets to decide whether or not the court has jurisdiction. The court will tell you, no, they don't. This is um, Jennifer Hudson, and she's singing Can't Stand the Rain. Okay? I've always liked this song from the very moment I heard it. Okay, anyway. On motion of the defendant, the court must dismiss the charges if it determines there is no jurisdiction over the offense charge. Ladies and gentlemen, these the reason why we can say these are facts because this is what the courts have already determined. Every time you raise an objection in court, you're challenging the court's jurisdiction. But most people don't even see an objection is a challenge to the court's jurisdiction. When jurisdiction is challenged, as it is here, asking the jury to determine jurisdiction because the defendant has raised a defense of lack of jurisdiction. When jurisdiction is a question of fact for the jury, failure to submit the issue to a jury is reversible error. I've challenged jurisdiction in every single one of my cases. You think they ever brought that to the jury's attention? You think they ever presented jury questions from me, even though I always gave them jury questions? So, hold on. I want you guys to understand something as to what I just explained. It is well established that to establish liability for negligence, a plaintiff must prove a duty. The courts have a duty to render justice and to assure that due process is availed to every single party in that courtroom. That the judge breached their duty by failing to follow the law and denying a party due process. And that the injury sustained was as a result of that breach of duty. That's what the proximate cause of injury the breach of duty is what led to the injury and that injury because of it I sustained damages all of these elements are essential to a valid claim that's okay look what I'm trying to tell you guys the reason for me doing this video is because I typed in elements of a valid claim and I said wait 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 before I even look at it that's why the screen wasn't even up before I even look at it I'm going to start the video so that everybody can see that I'm not doing this because I guess I know what I'm talking about. I'm doing this because I know I know what I'm talking about. Do you see how every single point in this document, every single issue, I am putting their own case law here? But wait, hold on a minute. Let's do a, one of these questions. Were tax revenues involved? A public servant? See, the public servants are funded by taxpayers which establishes a special contractual relationship as rendered by the Supreme Court in Gonzalez versus Castle Rock. The reason why we say was tax revenues involved, if they receive a payment for their salaries that is a part of funding from taxpayer dollars, then taxes were involved. So the answer is yes. Were there peace and or police officers, peace officers or police officers involved? A peace officer is somebody who's there to aid and assist the public. A police officer is someone who is there to protect the corporations and the corporate interests of the city and or state. Go back and look. Police officers are security officers. Peace officers are public servants. Police officers, you don't own them. They don't, they don't obey you. Peace officers, they're there to serve you. Police officers are not there to serve the public. Go back. Go take a look at the difference between the two. Pay attention. There's a difference between a peace officer and a security guard. Go ahead and take a look at the difference between a police officer and a peace officer. Look at the legal definition for both. 
the next question if there was a loss of liberty or your freedom now wait hold on Jennifer we just heard you no oh this is hey, this is nay look at that he actually wrote this song by the way y'all and him and Jennifer came together and sang that song together but he wrote the song all right and I think he did a very good job with writing this song all right if there was a loss of your freedom and you feel that you were denied access to due process as guaranteed by such excuse me guaranteed such as the right to be heard or the right to counsel of choice or and we're not talking about the right to an attorney of choice we're talking about exactly what the Constitution says the right to counsel of choice an attorney is not counsel an attorney is an officer of the court no law gives you the right to an officer of the court Supreme Court and Miranda said that people have the right to an attorney no you don't have the right to an attorney you have the privilege to an attorney but you have the right to counsel and an attorney is not counsel sorry there's too much research on that go look at the laws you did not know exist it's right there from the very beginning they explain the difference between an attorney and counsel the laws that you did not know exist we updated it take a look at the attorney counsel part it explains everything from the very beginning gives you all the case law I haven't gotten a chance to update any of those portions of case law because there's no need but we can and or the right not to be subjected to excessive bail and or penalty please indicate by checking each box that applies in this section was a search warrant and or arrest warrant involved in this situation please indicate by checking one of these boxes or all that applies were there I mean were you threatened by any of the above listed individuals okay each one of these statements say several occasions were there witnesses did someone suffer harm personal injury or harm did anyone complain verbal and or written complaint are you willing to testify remember harm and injury is necessary that's why you're gonna hand write this because you can only click one so you're gonna hand write it hold on let's continue because look I, this is what I want you to know I wasn't reading any case law I had not looked that up prior to doing this this is complete now ladies and gentlemen if you downloaded this document the alleged judicial criminal complaint form if you downloaded not the one for incarcerated individuals if you downloaded the PDF the fillable PDF and you did it before today you have to re-download it because there were some errors in the document as far as filling it in those have all been corrected and the Jurat has been corrected so download the form now won't be doing any more amendments to it sorry it's complete now won't be doing any more amendments if there are any other spelling errors I'm not concerned about those because that's not going to invalidate the document pay attention fact that when deciding whether or not or whether an order is void under rule 60 b4 for lack of subject matter jurisdiction, the court must look for the rare instance of a clear usurpation of power. Aw, look at that. They must only look for usurpation of power. This is what they said. That's why we can list it as a fact that they say this. And because they say it, we can document this is their words, and it's a fact that it's their words. Now, this is what they say. <laughs> Pay attention. An error does not make a judgment void under the Constitution Secured Protection Bill of Due Process Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, an error does make a judgment void. I said does not, but they say an error does make a judgment void. Okay, do you know why an error makes a judgment void? because no one may be held to answer oh you know what Johnny Manuel I think he was uh, he's doing the Whitney Houston song run to you 
I think he won like American Idol or something. Then he started doing performances, and he does all right. So that's why I downloaded it. A court plainly usurps jurisdiction when there is a want of jurisdiction and no arguable basis on which it could have rested a finding that it had jurisdiction as stipulated by the Bill of Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, I need all of you guys to understand something. The court gets jurisdiction, all rise, and when they say what the clerk of the court appearing before the court this morning is such and such such and such for the people and such and such such and such for the defendant when they say appearing before the court they are subjecting you to its jurisdiction the first thing you should be saying is objection while she's talking well so you're gonna have to, no i don't have to hold on this woman is saying i'm subjecting myself to your jurisdiction how dare you sit up here and force me into servitude that should be your conversation I don't care if you think it's going to make you look crazy. I don't care if you think it's going to make you look stupid. If you don't object to that junk while it's happening, you lose. I've already shown you that appearance means subjecting yourself to the court's jurisdiction. Wait, because we're doing this video and I'm showing y'all something, let me show y'all something. Let me tell you something! We can go here. Um... We don't want the somebody made an appearance at a cartoon. I knew I spelled that with an E and not an A. We we don't want somebody went and did a cartoon appearance. Pay attention. In a criminal prosecution, an appearance is the initial proceeding it with which a defendant is first brought before a judge. Now you see that? That sounds like a, a very good definition, huh? That's not it. We need the formal act right here in Wikipedia. It's a formal act. It's what you are doing by an appearance, which is why that idiot clerk always says appearing before the court. They use that word on purpose. In law, appearance from Latin, appare, to appear, is the coming into court of either of the parties to a suit and or the formal act by which a defendant submits himself to the jurisdiction of the court. Hold on, let's go here and see what, what they say right here. One or more of the preceding sentences incorporates text from a publication now in public domain, the Chisholm case, okay? Appearance, Encyclopedia Britannica, Cambridge, I went to Cambridge. Let's go here and see what it says okay yeah it just tells me about uh, Encyclopedia Britannica don't care okay and the fact that they tell you it's public domain this is a known fact this is not and this is 1911 ladies and gentlemen anytime you appear in court you are submitting yourself to the court's jurisdiction it means you're waiving your rights but you don't even get that because you never understood what it meant to make an appearance so when the the thing here is there are people who question whether or not I know what I'm talking about whether or not I know what I'm doing we have judges who say all kind of stuff about me and we have all kind of idiots who are saying I don't know what I'm doing well if I don't know what I'm doing how come all of the laws are agreeing with me go ahead every time I show you something how come all of the laws are agreeing with me and when they don't agree with me we find out that they're not even agreeing with the Constitution As all are aware that all public officials are deemed to know the law, as ignorance of the law is inexcusable, is it your belief that the aforementioned individuals not only had knowledge of the law, but made a deliberate choice and or decision to violate the law in order to deprive you of an inalienable and or secure bill of rights? If your answer to this question is in the affirmative, please complete the following section. This matter involves a mortgage. If it involves a mortgage, then this is the section you fill out. 
If it doesn't involve a mortgage, then you leave this section alone. Don't check anything. You follow? Thank you. If this matter involves an attorney, did any of these attorneys who claim to be representing other parties provide proof of their right to represent such parties? If the answer to the question is in the negative, please complete this section. If it is against the law, excuse me, as it is against the law for anyone acting under color and or authority of law to deny any person within the jurisdiction of the United States of any secured right, do you believe that the officials who violated your right were acting under color and or authority of, authority of law? If the answer to this question is in the affirmative, please complete this section. The plaintiff bears the version, a burden of persuasion of subject matter jurisdiction, uh, of if subject matter jurisdiction is challenged. People, we are challenging jurisdiction as a whole, and in order for them to have jurisdiction, they must prove all three elements of jurisdiction, subject matter, in rem, and personam. They must prove all three jurisdictions, subject matter, the particular cause that they're there for, in rem, the venue, that that's the proper venue for the hearing and personal jurisdiction that they have authority over you. You, by remaining silent, silence equates to acquiescence when it is accompanied by an act. By your remaining silent, all rise, you may be seated, and sitting down, you have just set up there by your conduct, accepted the terms of the agreement. Don't take my word for it. All you got to do is think about every single courtroom that you've been in, and it's the same proceeding every single time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Braids, and the Braids are singing their version of Bohemian Rhapsody. And I I thought, originally, I thought this was uh, Wyclef and uh, my girl, dang it. Uh, the, uh, dang it, why can't I think of their name? That's a shame. Well, Wyclef and I can't even think of that young lady's name. And that young lady can sing. And that's, that is a shame that I can't think of that group. Because I listen to them all the time. But this is who I thought that was. And I could not, for the life of me, believe that it wasn't. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, her name will come to me right now. I got too much on my mind. And I'm too tired. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to hold on now. Okay. We're going to pause that for a second. We're going to leave the music off for the rest of the video until the end. Because now we got to get real. I have several people who have contacted me, including one person who contacted me today says he's been watching the videos, which means he has access to being able to call me. If I do recall, let's go to one of the videos. This should be done by now. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, we're going to go to this video. This one's already been done. This one is an hour and 21 minutes long. This one I took my time putting up, um, but I'm glad it went up yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what my phone number isn't under the video I apologize for that I don't because technically I don't want everybody in the grandmama calling me because I'm that busy but those of you who are inside and you have access the phone number is six three one five three three six six eight three this equates to hold on let's put our dashes because uh, it's Christmas time is almost here and we need our dashes okay Ladies and gentlemen, this number equates to six, three, wait, hold on, oh, yeah, I'm messing up, six, three, one, five, three, E, E, O, N, V, three, okay, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the number six three one five Eon V three or six three one 
533-6683. That's why the number was chosen, because it's Eon V3. We've already talked to you guys about why Eon V3. What what Eon V3, what the V3, how it equals Eon. We've already talked to you guys about that. So I need you guys to understand, those of you who are inside, if you want to call me, this is the number. Yes, 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 I have another number that other people call me on. But those of you who are inside, oh, you know what? Oh, snap, I just realized something. Ha ha. You guys are going to, this is the Google Voice number. So you guys are going to run into, it's going to tell you to state your name. So you guys are not calling me from the pay phone. You're calling me from the phone phone. So you'll be able to get right through me because I do answer my phone when it rings. Okay? A lot of people have understood not to call me every day, not to call me every five minutes. And so my phone don't ring all day like it used to because I've had to let people know. All right? Now, I will start doing consults with individuals for legal matters. At first, I wasn't going to do it because it's a lot of work, but I'm not doing any motions for you. I can, if, if it's the beginning of the matter, I can help you out with what you need to do to protect yourself. How do you need to go back in and correct the damage that's already been done because you failed to protect yourself? All right. Let me get back to talking. Let's take this down as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the rule is and I've experienced this personally with our company you bring enough complaints against a company and you prevent them from being licensed and or bonded in a particular state we are an arbitration association Penny Mac and Plaza Mortgage have been filing lawsuit after lawsuit and they have not served a single paper on us in several lawsuits and so they were telling the court they were notifying us and we weren't being notified of anything. And the courts were making decisions against our organization saying that we were not responding. We only found out about one case. Just found out about it two weeks ago because they sent us notice that the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals had rejected an appeal that was filed by us. Ladies and gentlemen, we didn't file no appeal with no Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. These are the games that these idiots have been playing. But now they're messing with my reputation. Now they're lying on me, and I'm not sitting back allowing that. Let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm now letting them know that I'm tired of them with me. I'm now saying to them, I'm going to let everybody know what the secret is of getting their attention. Ladies and gentlemen, if you put in the valid information as to everything that happened, just stick to the facts. What facts are the facts? How do you stick to the facts? You stick to the elements, ladies and gentlemen. There are four. You, we've already documented they have a duty. That's what the document is for. So when you're explaining it, explain that this was the judge that was presiding over the case. That this judge was required to make sure that I received due process. This judge was required to make sure I was treated equally. Do you guys know, I read over several cases yesterday, one of them, where the court said the case was unpublished and it could not be used by any person to support their claim. Well, I'm sorry, you idiot. You cannot have an unpublished case that I can't use. That unpublished case is a decision by the court. It's an opinion by the court. Yes, I can use that opinion because it shows that the court gave someone justice and by law your justice must be equal your justice cannot be partial so if you gave johnny justice in this exact same situation you must give me justice in the exact same situation again a lot of people don't know how to explain that i was speaking with a young man um we did a consult was it yesterday yesterday and I finally was able to get a copy of the consult to him because we recorded it. And I finally got around the problems I was having with recording. And even though it took a while for me to get it to him because of the amount of time, we got it to him. But I was able to point out to him uh, a technicality in understanding what the police had done. Because as I told people, all I need to do is hear what happened the day of the arrest. I can point out all the mistakes the police make. 
because I was just reading yesterday where the police have been told <laughs> that they can do whatever they want. Don't worry about watching out for themselves on the arrest. That they're going to be forgiven of any mistakes they make. And that's why they make mistakes. And so all I do is I hammer them on the mistakes. That's why you keep hearing me talk about the day these idiots all, every single arrest day. As a matter of fact, especially the last one when I demanded to see the warrant. You know the law says that if I demand to see the warrant, they must show me the warrant. If you demand to see the warrant, they must show it to you and it can't be electronic. It has to be the actual warrant that is signed by the actual judge. It can be a copy, but it must be a copy of the actual warrant. They can't say, well, I got it on a computer. Well, then, fool, you ain't got no jurisdiction. That warrant is your authority. If you are here without authority, then you need to get off my property. Now, of course, they're still going to arrest you, but you just have to say it. If this matter involves alleged criminal conduct and or criminal misconduct of a judicial officer and or other officer of the court, that the public servant interrupted and or interfered with your exercise of your right for equal speech, time, in other words, when you were sitting up there trying to talk and they kept interfering with you or interrupting you while standing present before them, you notice we didn't say while appearing before them, we said standing present. A uh, present, Mrs. Crabtree. Yeah, I'm here. What? No, I didn't make no appearance today. I'm 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 present. Yeah, I'm I'm right here. Okay. No, they, they, I don't care if they're appearing. They can appear all they want. I'm present. I'm always gonna be present. I'm listen. I'm manipulant. You know what I mean? I'm manipulant. That that's what I am. I'm everywhere. I'm present. I'm I'm all, I'm all present. Yeah. Okay. If the answer to this question is any affirmative, please complete this section. Did the judicial officer and, and or other officer of the court notify you or inform you that they were monetizing and or receiving revenue from your involvement in the matter before them? As outlined in the Chris operating manual. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're receiving revenue for a matter that I'm participating in and you're monetizing that and you're marketing that with my name on it, then you're violating my right. You owe me. You don't get to sit up there and, that, man, you talk about copyright infringement. Ladies and gentlemen, they cannot market you out there in the market and make money off of you and not compensate you, especially if they themselves are being compensated. Think about it. That's why they have the copyright infringement. You saw YouTube. Hold on. Hold on. Let me show you. YouTube, not this one. Oh, I didn't save it. So... If you guys go to the video, the results of Private Attorney General, that's where the phone number is going to be. I'm not going to put it on every video because then I'll never get any sleep. Yes, 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 yes. I know other people do it, but I ain't other people. I ain't never been other people. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, copyright claim. Copyright claim. You don't get to use somebody else's material and broadcast it without somebody saying, Hey, what the you doing using my stuff? Now, see, because these videos are for educational purposes, and we're talking about the law, I don't have to get their permission. Uh-oh, they blocked this one. See that right there? It has been blocked worldwide, y'all. They blocked that video worldwide. You know, that's a shame that they would block that video worldwide. Let's take a look at the copyright claim. Because this is this is interesting. This this right here, no, I don't want that. I want the copyright claim. So let's go restriction. Learn mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this hasn't happened in a while. And so I'm gonna have to get rid of some of the music in this video in order for it to play. But this hasn't happened in a while. And I'm a little surprised that they did that. But I said, why I do what I do? I figured, and that video just went up. You just saw me uh, pick up that video. Well, anyway, let me get back and explaining to my people who are incarcerated what we're doing. Make copies of the judicial miscon no judicial criminal conduct complaint. Make copies of the judicial criminal conduct complaint. 
for incarcerated individuals. It's designed to be hand filled out or typed. That's why we did it the way we did it. We did it that way for you all, not for anyone else, because we understand your plight. If your rights were violated, and if you believe that you were defrauded, now what's defrauded? That they made many statements that were not true, that they told you, made certain promises, said you were, you were given due process. If they made statements like that, said you were given due process, that is a lie, that is a false statement. And if they did it to enrich themselves, they traded on the Chris system. That means they did it to enrich themselves. If they did it to enrich themselves, guess what? That's called fraud. And if you suffered injury as a result of that enrichment, then they can be held liable for that. Sorry, this is where I need to go. See, it ain't giving me... Look at that. It ain't giving me... Oh, this is what I need. This one right here. Okay, let's slide on over. You know what it ain't doing? It ain't... <laughs> it's supposed... This is what it's supposed to be doing. Okay? And it's supposed to be telling me what's the... The closer I get to you... Okay. What happens is this is Roberta Flack and Donnie Hathaway. And they didn't like, you know, because they got to make all their money off Roberta and Donnie. So what's going to happen is I'm going to mute the song. So you won't hear that song. You'll just hear me talking. I'm, I'm able to do that. They didn't have this two years ago. This is the system that they recently started allowing people to do that so what's gonna happen now is I don't have to do anything see this video will remain in its current state until the process is complete so you guys will probably hear this song tomorrow or later tonight but I don't have to do anything the video will keep processing so that video will be up and you'll get to hear what I do getting back to those of you who are incarcerated you thought I would forget no I'm not forgetting things like that anymore ladies and gentlemen those of you who are incarcerated, what we are doing, this is for you. We're letting you know, like with our company, the reason why Penny Mac and Plaza Mortgage were doing lawsuits against us, so that they can interfere with us getting insurance. What they didn't know, that as a federal arbitration association, we don't need to be bonded. As a federal arbitration association, we don't need to have a license from the state. They were bringing in lawsuits talking about being licensed and being bonded. We knew what they were trying to do because if you go back to 2018, that's exactly what I told you they would do. We were anticipating that type of stupidity. Don't worry about it. I will be going after Penny Mac and Plaza Mortgage. I've already tried filing a countersuit and each time they have blocked it. No matter how quickly we got it in, no matter how we sent it into the court, they have blocked it. To this day, our countersuit has not been filed, has not been responded to, but we have proof we sent it to the court, and we have proof the court received it. And they've ignored us every single time. But I got idiots who want to do videos about me talking about I don't know what I'm doing. Idiots. Sorry. <laughs> Whoo, Lord have mercy. I don't know where these punks who do videos regarding somebody like me who has the status and understanding of law want to sit up there documenting the fact that they don't know nothing about the law. You can hear it in their voice that they have no knowledge of the law, but then they want to make comments. That is amazing. Getting back to my incarcerated people, ladies and gentlemen, the same as with our corporation, all judges are corporations. All judges are corporations. They are registered corporations. We haven't figured out, found out where they are registered at, but we have proven in 2012 that they are corporations. Even did a video showing everybody that judges are corporations. Even show people my judge's corporation, his name, the location of his corporation, and everything. Okay, remember, they operate out of an office. <laughs> Y'all need to pay attention. 
Oh God, they take an oath of office. They operate out of an office. They are a corporation. I know it's that logical. It is that simple. That's the office they operate through. Ladies and gentlemen, politicians are the same. They don't operate under their name. They operate through a corporation. But anyway, because the judges are corporations, they have to be bonded just in case they harm one of you citizens of the United States of America. You know, one of you natural citizens. So they have to be bonded. Bring enough claims against one judge, he cannot be bonded. Eventually, he's no longer on the bench. I'm sorry. I think some people are starting to get it. And those who are incarcerated, most of you were put in there by the same person violating your rights. If he violated one person's rights, just saying. Apple and the tree don't fall far from it. If he violated one person's rights, more than likely there is a history of him violating another person's right along the same manner in the same way. And if they both file complaints, and then if there's six of them file a complaint, and then if there's 20 of them filing a complaint, eventually he's no more. What if he's already retired like some of the judges that I know? That doesn't stop them from being brought back into court and prosecuted. I told you, ladies and gentlemen, we just take several groups and we file our criminal complaints in the court. And we do it as a private attorney general after going to the United States Attorney General and saying, hey, take this case. Now, there is a, a way for the attorney general to ignore your rights. Because what the Attorney General will do is they will take the case and then they will plead it out to where nobody serves any time. Or they'll take the case and they will tank it on purpose, get it dismissed. Do you know how to stop the Attorney General from doing something stupid like that? Because the Attorney General will do something stupid like that. The way you stop the Attorney General from doing something stupid like that is you simply add the Attorney General's name. Because its attorneys were involved. If it's a state attorney, they're part of the Attorney General's Office of the United States of America. You don't believe me? Go back and take a look. These attorneys are able to go into state and federal courts. Go ahead and look at them. They're licensed in several states and they're licensed to be able to practice in the federal court and the state court. You don't believe me? Just go ahead and ask. Go ahead and check their license you'll see that they are able to practice in federal and state court, which means they're under the Attorney General's office. So, charge the Attorney General and ask for an independent investigation, saying that the Attorney General is not the proper party for handling this matter. This is what the document does, ladies and gentlemen. It's designed to get some act right. We are not trying to get rid of judges. Please. Judges are absolutely 100% positively necessary. Jehovah himself says that he is the judge of all mankind. He says that there will be an accounting. He says that he will sit down on his judgment seat and judge the nations. He is the ultimate judge. He says all the other judges are relatives sitting in a position because he has allowed it. So we're not trying to get rid of judges because then we'll be battling against him. Why would we do that? No, ladies and gentlemen, what we're doing is we're saying, stop violating our rights. Do your job. That's all. Stop committing crimes. When you violate our rights, the law says that's a crime. That you're depriving me of my rights while acting under color and or authority of law. You are committing a crime. And I have the right to file a complaint. That's what the alleged judicial complaint is all about so again ladies and gentlemen you want to download not the incarcerated individuals yours the original incarcerated document is complete yours is fine okay it's designed for typing and writing that's and it's perfect for that typing and writing okay the rest of you who are going to be printing it up on your printer and computers and all of that y'all's got to do something different Y'all's got to y'all's got to download the one that's there today. This day, the 25th of August. That's the one you need to download. Do you know why? 
because it's the complete one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 50 minutes worth of talking. And you know what? We're going to bring this on out with... There you go. All right? No, I've played Ray Charles so many times that we ain't got no problem with Ray. Plus, Ray Charles, his music is so far back in the day that it's almost grandfathered in. Ain't that right, Grandpa Ray? Ray, Ray. Yeah, Grandpa Ray Ray. You know what I'm saying? All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all take care. We got the braids taking us right out of here. Y'all know what I'm saying? Because they're doing a rhapsody with Bohemians. I don't know why Bohemians would be doing a rhapsody, but, you know, I guess Queen knew, huh? And Mr. Mercury. Nothing really matters, y'all. Take care, everybody. Gotta go.